Hey, thank you so much for joining us at our Cross Point Church podcast. Now, if you're new to our podcast or maybe new to our church in general, we're just a bunch of messed up people who don't have it all together, running after a heavenly leader who loves us and meets us right where we are. We hope this message encourages you, builds your faith, and strengthens your confidence as you continue down this journey of what it means to know and follow Jesus. Enjoy this message. Uh, let's thank this uh, band, these guys and ladies, man. Amazing, amazing. Hey, uh, let's pray. God, uh, this is what we've been wrestling with, with these moments where we feel with you, these moments where we just feel uh, a disconnect without you. And we've been coming to places, we've been coming to uh, experiences that are uh, giving us confidence, where we are beginning to have a security uh, and increased ways with you, maybe even for the first time. And so, God, I just pray that you continue to do that, help us see your personality, maybe even things about you that have been foreign to us that are beginning to become familiar and beginning to become known. And God, I just pray as we, as we kind of punctuate this journey today that you would, you would just cement some things in our hearts and uh, help us to be able to grab a hold of and continue the traction, continue the direction that we have been experiencing. And uh, we just pray these things according to your character, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, welcome to uh, week six of the journey, uh, journey home. Uh, my name's Kurt. If you are here for the first time, we are so excited you're here. And you might be thinking, man, I'm coming in at the back end of this. Uh, <laughs> am I going to feel like I just bad, you know, joined like a bad family reunion? I think, as you know, you heard from Abby a bit ago, I think this is one of the great weekends to be here because you're going to kind of see some of the, the fabric of what this community is about, some of the things we've been working on, some of the things God's been doing. You're going to hear you know, some stories of how God's been working and perhaps some of the ways God's God can work in your life, and you might just step into some of that as well. So we're glad you're here. If you've been with us every week, welcome back. And uh, let's make some noise for our online crowd this weekend. So excited to have you join us uh, across our city, our state, our nation, even our world. Uh, glad to have you join us. Now, you know, this is what we've been doing throughout the journey. We've really been wrestling with these places of where am I at home? Where, where do I not feel at home? Where do I just not live out of a confidence? And we've talked some about these orphan tendencies that we all have, these, these ways that we try to do life on our own independently uh, of even the belief that there is a heavenly entity that perhaps cares for us, that perhaps uh, can meet our needs. And this is kind of what we've been wrestling through in this idea of what does it mean to move more and more into the presence of God. And this has been happening in a lot of ways. In fact, this has been happening through our guidebooks. Uh, if you didn't pick up a guide yet, if you're here for the first time, these are absolutely free. They're at the doors. And we, we encourage you to grab one. This is just a great, great tool. It's been happening through our weekend services. It's been happening through small groups. Uh, the prayer experience that happened last week, uh, many of us experienced that. And let's talk about the prayer experience a moment. We've got some, some bags over here that um, the prayer experience was an audio experience where we kind of just did some visualization and, and, and listened and reflected. But all if you did that experience, one of the things you did is you actually dropped a bag. You, you, you came to a moment where you said, okay, what's the thing weighing you down? What's maybe a false belief about yourself you picked up? And, and what does it feel like when you begin to lay that baggage down and begin to walk more and more into who God says that you are? And so these bags kind of symbolize for many of us some of the things, the, the baggage, the false beliefs, some of the things that slow us down, weigh us down, that prevent us from becoming all that God wants us to be. And so if, if you've come to a place where you have either taken a step to receive Jesus during this journey, or maybe you've taken deeper steps in your faith with Jesus, uh, maybe you know, you've come to the place of realizing the appetite, approval, ambition. These are some of the things that get in the way where we try to fill some of our own needs that are ultimately places that only God can fill. And so today, I want to talk about what it means to remain in this place called home. What does it mean to continue to grow in this to feel a contentment, a sense of, you know, this, this peace that transcends human understanding, this confidence, this awareness that I do have a Heavenly Father who's with me and can provide for my needs. And how do I keep that fresh? How do I continue to stay there and continue to grow forward and re remain rooted in that? In fact, uh, the gospel writer, uh, John, uh, he, he said this of Jesus. This is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, one of the, the authorized biographers of Jesus' life. He said, Jesus, he, he kind of knew that this condition of orphanhood was something that you and I would constantly and persistently you know, battle. And, and he, he realized, unless he brought something additionally to us, that we weren't going to be able to overcome that. So here's what Jesus said. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. 
I will come to you on that day and I'll realize that I am in the, my Father and you are in me and I am in you. And so Jesus right here, he's talking about perhaps one of the greatest innovations that God has ever done. He's talking right here about the Holy Spirit. He's talking right here about this entity that's going to come that not only is going to be around us, like a physical entity, but something that actually can be in us. In fact, Jesus even went on to say, hey, it's actually going to be better that I go away. I'm not with you any longer. Um, You know, God's spirit power is not just going to be contained in like one individual, one superhero type individual. It's going to be actually in all of us who choose to receive him. And, and so he, he's kind of laying out this idea of the Holy Spirit beginning to take up residence, dwelling, guiding us, beginning to, to grow that confidence in us so we can continue to be at home. And, and Jesus said, hey, I'm not going to orphan you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to abandon you, even though I'm physically going away. I'm going to bring an entity. And when this happens, there's going to be things that are not possible in your strength that are going to be possible because of God's strength that's at work in you. And, and you're going to begin to see the character of God in new ways. You're going to see the hand of God, the way that God reveals himself and his presence in your life in just incredible ways. In fact, uh, I want you to hear one guy's story from this journey that's pretty amazing of how God has really been revealing himself, not just over the last few weeks, but the last few years, drawing him to, uh, to the Heavenly Father and, and just what that has looked like and how he's began to sense that. So uh, take a look here at Mark's story. Let's just say we all have challenges going through life. I had some challenges of my own. Um, anytime I had challenges, my mom, I could always call my mom and talk to my mom about it. And I remember my mom always saying, saying, well, just remember, God has a plan. You know, God has a plan. He's going to take care of you. And, uh, you know, at the time, just not being active in faith, uh, I didn't really know what that plan was, or I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even know if there was a plan. But October third, 2019, um, was probably one of the first time that I saw God's plan in action. Um, on that day, we unexpectedly lost my mother. Um, you know, and that day we saw, or I saw a plan go into play. It was not the, not the plan we want because we didn't want to lose my mom. Okay. But that particular day, um, They rushed my mom to the hospital. I was able to get there. I was able to see mom. Um, Middle of the afternoon, she was doing much better. She was was talking. Um, I worked a a third shift job. It was probably five in the afternoon. Uh, Gave mom a kiss, told her goodbye, and I was gonna head back to Indianapolis. She was actually in a hospital probably about 30 miles uh, south of Fort Wayne. So anyways, about 45 minutes after I left, um, my dad called me and let me know that she'd made a turn for the worse and they were sending a helicopter for her and they were gonna rush her to a hospital in Fort Wayne where they could provide better care for her. So uh, first question I asked my dad, do you want me to come pick you up? Do you need need me to come get you? He's like, no, I'm fine. He goes, just go to the hospital in Fort Wayne. We'll meet you there. So I start to hightail it towards Fort Wayne. I was probably 10 minutes from the hospital in Fort Wayne. Dad calls me again and uh, said, can you come pick me up? Um, you know, they don't think I should be driving. So of course I did turn around. And so now I'm kind of drove past where they were driving back towards them. Um, so I was probably on the road, maybe hour and a half, two hours from the time I last left the hospital. Pull into the hospital, first thing I saw, I saw the helicopter sitting there, and it's a small uh, small hospital, so I knew that helicopter was probably the one they called for my mom, so I knew it probably wasn't good. So as I go into the hospital and went up to the ICU, saw, um, saw my dad in the hallway talking to a nurse, um, I approached them. Um, the, uh, my dad said, hey, you know what, they... They actually revived your mom. They just got her. They're taking her out to the hospital right now, or not to the hospital, out to the, to the helicopter right now. And I told my dad, I said, well, let's go. Let's, let's go to Fort Wayne. And the nurse like, you know, just let, let's let the helicopter take off first. And then once that happens, you know, you guys could go to Fort Wayne. So it's probably 10 minutes later, they came and uh, told us the doctor wanted to see us. And they let us know that mom didn't make it uh, they didn't make it off the ground and she had passed away. So 
you know, the plan that I saw, again, wasn't the plan that I wanted, but for that whole time I was driving around, I guess God revived my mom so I could be there with my dad so he didn't have to go through that himself. It was kind of the turning point. I think I, you know, um, my mom, when we went to church younger or even that time period where I kind of got away from faith, when I would call my mom up and say, hey, mom, what do you want for your birthday? She go, oh, just go to church with me. Just go to church. So when I saw that plan in place, I decided I want to get back into, into church. Um, and I immediately started seeking church. So went to several churches here in the Fishers area. I uh, came to Cross Point. It was, probably, it was probably November, probably less than a month after mom had passed. And uh, here I am. Getting into faith, you know, um, I volunteer on the tech team here at church. Usually a couple times a month, I'm the guy running the lights and uh, got involved in a small group. We meet every, every Tuesday evening. Uh, I've probably been in that small group about three years right now and really have uh, formed a good bond with those guys. And, uh, you know, we got a prayer circle going on. So quite often there's, there's times where, uh, you know, we'll get in a group text message and uh, someone will ask a prayer and we'll pray for each other. And, you know, more times than not, it seems like that prayer is answered. Wow, let's thank Mark for sharing his story, man. So, so cool. Uh, when you see the hand of God and you begin to see, man, there's something here. As he said, that began to make a turn. And, and Mark is experiencing something right here that the Apostle Paul talks about in uh, one of his letters in terms of what happens when we begin to seek God. And, and this is kind of unique because the Apostle Paul, if you're not familiar with him, he's a guy who really didn't understand what it meant to know Jesus. He didn't grow up in a, a setting or a home or a culture that was about or circulated around Jesus. And so it was later in his life when he began to himself begin to understand this. And now he's trying to help others who are understanding what it means to grow uh, in this experience. And he, here's what he says right here. He says, according to the riches of his glory, meaning God's glory, may he grant you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to, and look at this word right here, comprehend, to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know that the love of Christ surpasses knowledge, I mean, it's not just my, my you know, intellectual awareness that I actually feel, experience something, and that you might be filled with all of the fullness of God. Let me tell you something. That right there is, is not something that you can just will yourself toward. You can't just say, hey, I want to get to that place where I live out of that kind of confidence, that kind of peace, that kind of understanding. You, you can't go to some self-help seminar and just like try to cultivate that. I mean, it's just not going to happen. That experience only comes when, when God's spirit is at work in us, and, and, and that spirit comes from God, and it is within you. In fact, this word right here highlighted, this word comprehend, that we may comprehend the love of God. You know, this, this isn't just to, to go, oh, okay, I see, I, I just saw it. I think I just, I just thought about that right there. No, this is like to, to grasp it. To comprehend is to grasp, to grapple with, to, to take hold of, to, to own, to say, okay, I'm going to, to claim this for myself right here. And, and this is a process that, that God actually takes us on in our journey of faith continually. And so a couple big ideas. How, how do we remain at home? What, 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 what are our next moves? What is God wanting us to do next? A couple things. Uh, number one, first thing that, that, that we can do is, is receiving the Spirit. And, and he tells us that Jesus even said, you know, we will grow in learning to interpret and understand the Spirit. And there was a moment where Jesus told his team, he, he said, hey, I'm going to go away. I'm not going to be here physically anymore. Um, it's going to be better that way. And I, every time I read that, I, I just have um, in my mind, I picture the disciples just being like, what? Are you on crack? Like, Jesus, what is going on? Like, what do you mean it's going to be better that you're not here? I mean, that just seems absurd to us. I mean, we've had moments, Jesus. I mean, we remember the day we were at the wedding and, you know, the wine ran out and we're down, we're just drinking water. All of a sudden, we got wine in our cups again because of you. How is it going to be better that you're not here? 
In, in that day where there were like, you know, 5,000 men plus women and children on the hillside and they didn't have anything to eat and you fed everybody with leftovers out of five pieces of bread and a couple fish. Like Jesus, how in the world is it gonna be better with you not right here beside us. And, and so Jesus, he, he's kind of telling them, he's saying, hey, listen, I'm not gonna abandon you. When I say I'm gonna go away, it's not like I'm leaving you just on your own. It, it, he's, he's preparing them because there's a moment where they're actually going to receive his Holy Spirit. And, and, and nobody by nature, by the way, has the Holy Spirit, just out of our own nature. I mean, I hear this frequently. I hear somebody, you know, kind of be like, well, I've always kind of been around faith, always had faith, always had God in my life. You, you may have been around God. Well, no, I mean, I've actually, God's just always been in me. Well, no, no, he hasn't. I hate to tell you um, that uh, there is nobody in the history of the story of God that has had that. I mean, that it's, that's not the way it works. We, we receive, we receive God's God's grace, we receive from our Heavenly Father through Jesus, and as a result of that, we actually receive His Spirit as a part of that. And then from that moment forward, there are numerous moments where we, we receive the Spirit in an ongoing way, where we're this, this separate entity, it's not, not God the Father, it's not Jesus the Son, it's actually His Spirit that He leaves for us, that, that it takes up residence in us. As we receive our Heavenly Father through Christ, we, He takes up residence, the Spirit takes up residence, He begins to dwell in and among, and, and through us, guiding us, coaching us. Thinking back, I, I was trying to think back, to like, when, when did I clearly know that in my life? I, I don't fully know. Um, I grew up in a family of faith. My dad was a pastor. Uh, I resisted a bit taking a step of faith, and when I was 14, I was at a concert, and that's when I actually decided, okay, Jesus, um, I'm gonna put the weight of my life into you. I'm gonna receive you as my savior. And I just come to the place where I just wasn't working on my own and I realized, okay, I do need an entity outside of myself. And I think I, as, as even other places of scripture teach us, I receive the spirit in that moment. God says, the moment you receive me, my spirit begins uh, to take residence in you. I think probably a few weeks later, um, after that, when I was doing some illegal things, um, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm in a lot of trouble. God, I need you to save me out of this. And things you know, didn't go exactly the way I wanted, but they weren't as bad as they could have been. I'm like, okay, God, I really need to have you lead me more because I'm getting myself in a lot of trouble. And I kind of, okay, God, I want to make you my leader. I'm sorry I did that. I'm, I'm back on board with you. Maybe it was a little more in that moment. And then again, when I did that like two weeks later again, maybe a few months later when I got baptized and I decided, okay, I really need to you know, publicly make this an expression of faith where I, I just say, hey, I'm, I'm gonna take a step of baptism to express that Jesus, I wanna be with you and you're with me. And, and, and I'm confident that was a moment where I felt that because that's really what baptism is, is that sense of, okay, God's spirit is in me and God's approving of me. Um, I, I don't know fully where it happened, uh, but it's still happening. And, and, and it's been progressively happening. It's this ongoing filling from the moment that we, we begin that relationship with Jesus. It's an ongoing reception. And, and there's various you know, documenters and, and writers in the New Testament that talk about being filled with the Spirit, this process that God continues to take us through to grow our awareness of his work in our life. And, 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 and you know, Jesus says, hey, I didn't leave you. I didn't abandon you. I've actually sent my Spirit to be there with you. You don't have to live as orphans. I'm here. In fact, the Apostle Paul says something else. He says, uh, for all who are led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> what did he say right there? All of us, every single one of us. This is an all skate right here. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. We're part of God's spiritual family. You did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, I mean, that is a very intimate term. When we, when we cry out to our Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, Father, it is the very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. There's a moment where the Spirit begins to take up residence in our life. It begins to empower us. You know, sometimes we ignore it. Sometimes we, we have to learn over time to pay attention to this. And we're learning what it means to stay at home in that. In a sense, think of it this way. It's like the Spirit domesticates us, all right? It, it, it domesticates us. We're, we're orphans before this, wandering around, doing our own thing. We have no awareness that God has a plan. I mean, just like Mark said, I didn't even know that there was a plan. I mean, I knew it. Somebody told me. I didn't know what it looked like. But, but the Spirit, when we begin to see it, begins to take a breath. It shows us. It domesticates us. 
Now, when I say domesticate, I know for some of us, you're like, ah, that just means you got weak, right? No. Um, you know, you hear domesticate, you're like, gosh, I mean, that just means I lost a testicle. That means, man, I lost some of my manhood. I mean, I'm less of a man right here. Or, dude, the dude's 30, he's driving a minivan, he got domesticated. <laughs> I mean, you know, we think of like, I got weak, I, um, no, listen, by the way, if you drive a minivan and you're a guy, I think that's one of the, the most manly things you can do, by the way. <laughs> I really do. We got two in our home, but I just think that it's one of the most manly, <laughs> yes, thank you. I think when you put the need, your preference aside for the best interests of your family, I think, I think, I think that's a, an amazing thing that, that represents the character of God right there. And so when he says domesticate, he's not talking becoming weak. He's not talking losing this zest, this adventure for life. No, he's talking about domesticating the sense of bringing us into the family, helping us realize we're part of God's spiritual family. We're a part of the household of God. You know, last weekend, we talked about a place at the table, and I kind of tried to illustrate through some of my friends that have been a part of my community right here. Uh, we shared a meal here and, and tried to illustrate that, you know, when you receive from God, you, you are like my brother and, and, or my sister. You know, it's not like you're like my brother. You are my brother. You are my sister Be, through the family of God, through what Jesus did. He unites us. And you know, these guys last weekend, I mean, I'm closer to some of them than I am my actual biological family. I mean, I spend more time with them and we have more connection through our faith and through our, our spiritual family than I do with some of my extended biological family. That's what happens in the family, God. It's like a few weeks ago when uh, my wife and I were in New York City. We were riding the, the New Jersey train, transit train into the city, and there was an elderly black woman that got on the train and was looking for a place to sit, and there was a little space. And so we you know, moved down and made space for her, and she sat down and started telling me a bit of just the challenges on her day, and I just said, you know, I'm so sorry. I hope your day's better. And she looked at me, and she said, are you a Christian? I said, in fact, I am. <laughs> and she said, I knew it. I don't know how she knew it. I don't go around saying, hey, I'm a pastor. I'm a Christian. I mean, just our brief interaction. But then we started talking. We immediately had a connection right there. Unlike others that are perhaps the same skin color as I am or the same economic class or, you know, even, you know, live in the same community, but doesn't believe in Jesus or trust in Jesus as a savior. See, there's a unique bond that happens. The, the Spirit does something tangible inside of us and unites us. In another letter in the New Testament, 1 Peter, we get another glimpse of what it means to remain at home. And here, here's what it says. It says, as obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance. Meaning things that by nature we do. We, we all by nature have certain things we gravitate to. We have this pile of baggage. We gravitate back to the pile, to, to vices, to things. He's like, hey, don't, don't do the things that are by nature. We all do this. Now, there's a word in this right here that I'm going to be honest. It is not a very sexy word in our culture today. It, it is this, this phrase, obedient children. That is like a four-letter word right there. There's some four-letter words that, you know, people don't like to say, and we, we try to limit them here. Um, I'm going to show you a four-letter word in a moment that I just think people think is like the worst four-letter word ever, and, and it's just vile to them. It's this word right here, um, obey, O-B-E-Y. I, I think for many of us, we see that. And we're like, gosh, that is a dirty word. That is, we, we, you know, that is for somebody who is a loser. That's for somebody who has no options. That is for somebody who, you know, has no brain. They can't think for themselves. They just disobey, whatever. You know, listen, when you come into the household of God, you will learn that you have a heavenly father who actually understands things better than you do. And we naturally begin to realize, oh my gosh, part of my role is to relent to that, to submit to that, to, I'm actually drawn to obey. You know, as we think about this, uh, some of this baggage back here, uh, if I were to go through some of these bags that symbolize some of the, the baggage we've left behind, maybe some of our outages from our younger years, maybe some things are, we experienced in our family of origin that were, were there really from the beginning. I mean, our parents didn't probably create some of those outages. Maybe some experiences watered them and helped them grow, but we naturally have outages. If I were to pick a bag up that was left uh, by someone that perhaps is, I don't know, uh, 50, mid 50s, 60, maybe into their 70s, and I pick another bag up that maybe someone in their 20s, 30s, maybe into their 40s, you know, some of their baggage, a bag that represents some of the things in their life, they would be entirely different bags. In fact, you know, 
if, if for somebody who's, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, you probably had a parent who served in the military, uh, uh, perhaps a father that fought in a war. Um, you probably had a father that was a pretty stern authority figure, uh, maybe even, you know, really required you to toe the line. And, and, and perhaps even you never or, or infrequently heard the phrase from your father, I love you. And, and that was just a part of your, your, your experience. And, and yet there's parts of the character of God that you see in your earthly father that you can connect to your heavenly father. I mean, there's some authority things that, you know, okay, God is an authority and, that, and it represents some of that right there. At the same time, if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, you might be going, what do you mean you never heard your, your father or your, your authority parent, you know, tell you they loved you? I heard that all the time. Of course you did. You know why? Because you grew up in a child-centered home. It was a very different culture than somebody who's older. You, you grew up in a home the, where the family, you know, schedule revolved around the child, where the family finances revolve around the child, you know, what kind of soccer camps and band camps and, you know, and, 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 and swim camps, all, all the things that we have to make sure we can do for our children. And again, there was an, there's an aspect of God in that, in that character and experience as well, one that says, hey, you're important and, 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 and we value you. But you probably, if you are in the younger end of that spectrum, never heard your parents say, hey, just, just shut your trap and do it. <laughs> just do it. Toe the line, get her done, do it. You, you perhaps were maybe parent a little more like, well, come on, like you're cooed, like, um, you know, never told no, kind of like, I'm not going to say no, but I really want to steer you to a better decision. You were wooed and c- celebrated. And, and again, nothing wrong with that. It's just that perhaps we've never experienced our Heavenly Father as both an authority and this, this loving entity. And, and the reality is if we have either far extreme, it actually leaves outages for us. I mean, the process through which we grow is we see God does uniquely care for us, but he also is an authority where we, there are certain things we obey, we submit, and his love draws us to do that. And, and, and if we understand that when we don't, there's actually just natural consequences. In fact, Jesus, again, another time, talked about He says, I'm not going to leave you as orphans, but then he says, here's what I'm going to enable you to do. He says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love them, and we will come to them. Look at this last phrase. We will make our home with them. That's what the Spirit does. The Spirit enables us to obey God, The Spirit enables us to love God, to increasingly see where God is working, to pay attention to his hand in our lives. It enables us to dwell at home. Now, I want to kind of give you a visual of what this looks like. I want to illustrate this. We're going to bring the house lights down. And and now, I I want you to think of this single, this spot that is present right here, this light that is coming. I want you to think of this area that I'm in right now. As, as kind of the realm of God's, God's goodness. This light right here, let's just say, this is where, when I'm in the realm of God's goodness, when I'm obeying, when I'm abiding in who God is, when I'm abiding by the ways that he calls me to live, when I'm following his, his ways, I, I experience the fullness of God. I experience all, all of his goodness in this moment. And, and, I, and I feel it, I experience it, I, 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 it's, just, it's around me, I, I feel a fullness. Now, when, if I step out of this, there's moments we step out of this, and we might even go back to the vomit pile over here, all the things we vomited up, all the baggage that we said, hey, I'm going to drop this off, this stuff has been so difficult, this stuff has weighed me down, um, but we come back, we go, oh, this, this was kind of fun, or I kind of like having the approval of other people, it makes me feel better, it makes me feel successful in my job. And, and it, you know, we start picking this stuff up, And and we're kind of outside of the fullness of the presence of God right here. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying that that God doesn't love us right here. I'm not saying that we are not still a part of his family or or that God, you know, we we don't have a relationship with God. It's just that we've stepped out of the light. We've stepped out of the the realm where we experience all that God has for us. And we, we naturally do this. We take detours to this space. But there's something about being in the presence. I mean, when I'm in that place where, where I do experience the fullness of God, where I, I'm in the light, I'm, this is the place of home right here. And, and when I'm at home, I'm obeying his guidance. I'm, 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 I'm following his ways. I'm, I'm paying attention to what he wants me to do. I say, okay, you want me to do that, God? Okay, I'm going to do that. Because when you, when you instruct me to do that, I just life is just better. I'm better at life. Life's better. And it's amazing how that works. This is, this is what happens 
with, with this idea of obedience. When I'm following his lead, when I'm, when I'm living, when I'm treating others the way that, that God says, hey, I want you to, to, to love others generously. I want you to use your life to be a blessing. When I'm, when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing the fullness. Now, the reality is there's a lot of options. I mean, it's not just like one way. It's not like a single, you know, thing that's available in many cases. I mean, I can, you know, I can go over here. And I can be like, I'm in the light right here. I can, I'm experiencing the fullness of God right here. Um, I can, you know, go back here and I can say, oh, man, God, uh, you know, there's a lot of places I can be and I'm still experiencing, you know, the fullness of God. Um, a lot of decisions. In fact, uh, earlier this year, I had to make a couple decisions, had to, had to put two sets of tires on two of our vehicles. I'll tell you what, I would rather stick an airsoft gun up my nose and pull the trigger a few times. I mean, that, I, that's how much I hate buying tires. It's just like, it, you know, it, it's like, it's like I, I would do about anything other than buying tires. Tires are almost worthless. It's like, a, it's like wasting money except for the fact of safety and it like saves your life. I mean, nothing real big, but you know, I, I hate buying tires. But when I bought tires, you know, I, it's not like there's a certain brand or style or um, level that God's like, this is the only one. I think God doesn't care. I think he's like, well, buy whatever you want. I mean, if you want to buy top of the line, do that. If you want to buy, you know, retreads, I, he doesn't really care. Um, there are innumerable options in, in, in my decision-making process right there. And, and this is really kind of how it is in many cases. There are innumerable things that when we are in kind of the fullness of God, when we're abiding in him, we have a lot of options. But then there are also times where God says, I'm sorry, that right there is just not an option for you. And I could give you some examples of what that looks like. I'm not going to do that right now. Um, and, And the reason I'm not going to do that is because perhaps right now, the Holy Spirit is beginning to talk to you. Perhaps right now the Holy Spirit is beginning to perhaps reveal to you some things, nudging you. Maybe he's going to be nudging you for the rest of our time on something that he wants you to obey in. And if I, you know, pigeonhole it, you might not be open to whatever he's nudging you in. What does it mean to obey? You know, to obey is whenever you see God's character revealed somewhere in God's narrative in the Bible, in the story of God, or whenever you think something, you go, oh, I think Jesus would really approve of of that. What do you do? You know what you do? You do it. That's what you do. You do it. You, you do it. And, and what is it that you should stop doing? Well, if there's anything that, that God says, hey, this, that thing that you're doing, it's kind of outside of my character. It doesn't really represent my best intention or my character for you. God will never invite you to do something that's outside of his character. Then, then, then you stop that. So you do it and you stop that. That's, that's pretty simple, right? You do it, you stop that. And when you do this, when you do this, let me tell you something, you're abiding you're abiding in your heavenly father and, and, and you're, you're experiencing the fullness of what he has for you. Let me ask you, what is it? What is it right now that perhaps God is quickening in your mind that he's just saying to you, hey, right now, I want you to start doing this. This is something that I want you to start doing. Or what is it right now God's saying, hey, this is, this is something I want you to stop. This is something I, I want you to put a pause on. You see, as we identify these, if we don't actually sense and hear from God's spirit and move on these, it begins to cap our spiritual life. It's like we're sending Jesus a message. We're, we're kind of saying, hey, I'm going to go back to the vomit pile. I'm not really interested in staying in the light. I'm going I'm to go back to some of the things that make me feel good. I know these will satisfy. And, and, and so, I, God, I, I want you, but I, I really want more of this. And again, it's not that we're outside of the realm of God's God's fullness is just that we're not, we're not experiencing his best. And, and, and the Heavenly Father wants you to experience his best. And you're not going to experience the fullness of that until there's certain things that we eliminate or that we begin. And, and part of that is going, okay, you are my Father. You are an authority. And, and what you say, it goes. And, and, and I don't even fully understand it sometimes, but I'm, I'm going to trust you in this. I'm telling you, when, when this happens... When this happens, you begin to experience a peace. There begins to be this, um, this validation 
You can go through certain circumstances and have the ability to go through things that, that perhaps others who, who maybe just, you know, are church-going orphans, they, they don't really, you know, ask these questions, you know, or, or recognize the spirit at work, you know, it's just let me get a little spot of, you know, shot of spirituality, let me have a spiritual cocktail, make me feel a little better, and then, you know, go on, and then we go right back to the vomit pile, and, and God knows, says, no, I want you to, to pay attention to what I'm doing. This is a massive, massive deal to going forward and continuing to experience this. For me, um, I can tell you my life is not perfect. <laughs> um, I've got lots of problems, uh, lots of stresses right now, lots of probably like many of you. I have momentary lapses where I walk out of the light and I go back to the vomit pile. I have moments where I take detours out of God's goodness and, and I, I feel it's not like I'm out, you know, God has just uh, you know, abandoned me. He, he's loving me there too. It's just that I'm not experiencing his best. If things are black and white, you know, kind of clear. I've kind of worked those out over the years. I'm pretty good at that, but it, I'm trying to be a bit more sensitive to some of the things where I'm sensing, okay, God, what's next? And where are you leading me next? Where are you at work? And how are you prompting me? And how am I reading your spirit and the things you want me to do? I, I want to obey those nudges, e even if they're not something that shows up in a verse somewhere. I want you to hear a bit more of Mark's story um, of how he has been responding, hearing, you know, being nudged by God and obeying, actually following through and how that's actually led him uh, to taking the step of water baptism and his faith. Take a look at his story. Probably one of the biggest things that I've learned from the journey uh, was the service where you talked about orphan tendencies. Uh, I've always struggled with the orphan tendency of approval. I've always, you know, through my career, through other challenges in life, I've always thought that I needed to get someone else's approval to feel value in my life. Um, you know, and I, one thing that I've realized in this journey is I don't necessarily need anyone else's approval, but as long as I have God's approval and as long as I receive God, um, God's gonna have that plan for me. Uh, last Wednesday, um, I was online, at, looking at the internal job postings and there was a job that I saw posted that's right here in Indianapolis and it's it's the job that I've always wanted and always desired to have. Um, my immediately thought I jumped back to the approval orphan tendency and I'm like I, I just don't know about this and I remember telling myself I'm like well maybe God will give me a sign. It was probably an hour later, I got the email about the prayer experience. So I'm like, oh, maybe this is my sign. So I dove in and I did the prayer experience. Um, even during the prayer experience now, and I'm just gonna let you know, the job that I currently have, I, I truly do enjoy it. Um, but during the prayer experience, as I was doing that, one thing, um, I think there was one question in there about where do you feel more at home? I feel, I feel very at home in what I'm currently doing. So even after the prayer experience, I'm like, no, nope, I'm just gonna stay where I'm at. I'm happy with doing what I'm doing. But then it dawned on me again when I think back about God's plan, if I apply for this job and if I don't get the job, it's okay. It's really okay because that's just God telling me that this wasn't the right pathway for me. And maybe he knows that I'll be happier doing what I'm doing. Yeah. So by getting baptized this weekend and some of my, again, life experiences, the orphan tendency of approval, uh, the, the plan that I've seen God lay out for me. Um, mm -hmm. cause like I, you know, well, I told you three services Thursday, I didn't think about it at all. Maybe. And then Sunday, first service, I started getting the nudge. Yeah. And then by second service, I'm decided I, I have to do this. I've just, I've come to the realization that if I receive God, God is going to continue to show me his plan. And, you know, he's, he's not going to put me in a bad place. And uh, I just want to you know, be dedicated to him and let him know that I am wanting to receive him and be part of his family. Now let's thank Mark again. I tell you what, I, every time I get, 
Ooh, yeah. I, I get like goosebumps when I hear him talking about this and just how he is experiencing God by continuing to one step after another, you know, realizing, okay, God, you are revealing yourself. And as I obey, I experience more of you and being sensitive to these nudges. You know, the very first thing that Jesus asks us to do, to follow him, to be obedient, and after, you know, we take a step to receive him, is to step into the waters of baptism. In fact, one time Jesus even said, he's like, hey, believe, be baptized. He's like, let me just be really clear. He's like, you know, being baptized doesn't make you believe, but it's like kind of the next step right after. And I think he knew how powerful this moment was. In fact, for Jesus, we've talked about this over the last few weeks. It was his best day ever, I think, the day of his baptism. I really do. I think he had the shirt on and all. I think he's like, man, I, that moment, and it, because, you know, when Jesus was baptized, this was a moment where it says the heavens opened up. God literally, his heavenly father, literally said to him, you are my son. I'm so pleased. I'm so delighted. You bring me great pleasure. And you're like, of course. I mean, he's Jesus. Who, you know, Jesus is going to do that. No, he hadn't done anything. He hadn't done any miracles, hadn't done any amazing teachings, any of the amazing stuff we, you know, know Jesus for. He, 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 it was just in his status as a beloved child. And I think... Jesus knew how powerful that affirmation was, and it's why he asked us to follow him in that. I mean, I can only imagine. I can only imagine how proud he is when we take that step. I mean, as a parent, each of my four kids, for Julie and I both, when our kids each took their step of baptism, you know, on their own decision, man, I, we were just overwhelmed. And we, we've got some emails this weekend from parents who have kids getting baptized, students this weekend. They're like, we are so proud of them. I, 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 I get it. I can only imagine how how overwhelmingly proud our Heavenly Father is when we take this step. So our baptism team is uh, going to go ahead and exit the room. They're going to be out in the commons, and uh, they're ready to serve uh, anyone that wants to take the step of water baptism. For the rest of us, I want you to go ahead and stand with me. We're going we're, we're gonna to have a great moment here as we close this service out. We're going to uh, just have some, some moments where we're going to help us experience and feel through music, the, you know, the presence of God. If you came prepared to be baptized, you, you're like, hey, I'm in. I'm getting in the water today. Uh, you can go ahead and exit to the commons, and our team will uh, just guide you through the whole process. And a couple of our baptisms this weekend, our students, our kids from Crosspoint Kids and Student Ministry, love, 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 love uh, when I, we see students and children taking these these steps and uh, just, just you know, the, the, this sense of I'm obeying, I'm following what God's asking me to do. Perhaps for you, perhaps today is your day. Maybe you've never taken this step. And like Mark, there's been some nudges where you're like, gosh, I just, you know, he sat in three services last weekend running lights and he, he's like all weekend, he's like, I'm just like, okay, I didn't really you know, get it Thursday, but by Sunday morning, first service and by, you know, second service, like I just felt like this is what I have to do. And so perhaps this is your day. There's two options today. We, we have both options available this weekend. Uh, we, we're going to have the, the waters, the rains uh, available where you could walk through the waters of baptism. Um, the, these, this, this is something that's amazing. And, and you'll have the chance to make a profession of faith and then uh, just walk through this, this rain that, that cleanses over. You can pause in the middle of it if you want. Just let it you know, flow over you for a moment and, uh, and just soak it in. And, and this kind of symbolizes is as Paul talks about, that we walk into a new life when we receive Jesus. We walk into, and, and, and this reminds us of how Jesus cleanses us, how he embraces us. And so perhaps you want to walk the waters or uh, the baptism tub is going to be open. You can go full immersion where we, you know, put you underwater. <laughs> Not that long. <laughs> but you, know, you, the, you go underwater, you come out, and it's a full experience. I mean, you feel the fullness of that water that symbolizes the cleansing and and the reminder that our Heavenly Father, we raised up a new creation, and your Heavenly Father, He affirms you, not because of anything you've done, because of who you are. And so the only qualification for baptism, the question, some, sometimes people are like, what, what's the question? What do you talk to people about when they get baptized? Well, we, we, one, we tell you how excited we are, and then two, we'll, we're gonna ask one question. The question we ask is, who's your savior? Who's your savior? It's the only question. If you can say Jesus, that's the only qualifier for taking the step of baptism. Jesus says your next step, really, your really next spiritual step is, is baptism. And I just want to encourage you, you know, to, to follow those nudges. I mean, you know, to, to, to pay attention, you know, listen, I, there's a lot of times it's like, oh man, my, my family's not here. I, I want, I'm waiting for the perfect day. There will never be a perfect day. I'll just tell you, never will. Um, you, you might be thinking, well, I didn't come prepared. We've got clothes. We've got, you know, shorts, undergarments, 
t-shirt for you, hair product when you're done, a towel. We have everything you need to walk out in the same, same clothes. Our, our team will help you uh, walk through that experience. Maybe you were baptized when you were younger, maybe as a kid or even as an adult and you wandered away from faith. You're like, should I do this again? Um, well, let me, let me tell you, if you feel like you have stepped away and there's a moment of re-engaging, um, you know, perhaps, perhaps stepping into the waters is something that will punctuate that moment for you. I can tell you for me, you know, when I took the step to be baptized, it's very personal. I mean, I struggled. I'm like, man, what if I let God down? What if I do this publicly? And then people are like, oh, Kurt, you, you're a failure. You do things you shouldn't do. Um, I struggled with that. And then I was reminded that God's spiritual family is not for perfect people. It's actually for those who are humble and recognize, no, I, I, I don't have it together. And I need a savior who will implant his spirit in me and help me, help me live the fullness of what he designed for me. So band's gonna lead us. Uh, we're gonna have just some amazing moments of, of, of singing. And if today's your day, we'd love to celebrate that with you. Uh, you can take somebody with you. You can have somebody walk alongside you, get in the water with you, uh, family members, you know, somebody from your small group, whatever it might be. I just don't want you to miss this moment if today's your day. So uh, you can exit if, if you wanna take that step. If you're just feeling nudged right now or while I pray at any point, uh, you, can, you can do that. Let me pray for us. God, uh, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for, man, for your incredible innovation of the spirit who comes and works in us once we receive you. And right now, Father, um, I just pray that that would continue to be at work in us for all of us who, whether it was 30 years ago, 50 years ago, or you know, 10 days ago, or 10 minutes ago, that we began to realize that this all begins by us receiving you, receiving what Jesus did on the cross for us. And, and so for any of us who even right now might be you know, just feeling the nudge to take this step of outward expression to say, God, I'm with you, you're with me. I, just, I need this reminder. I need this reminder of your affirmation for me. Uh, if that's where you are, man, God, I pray that you give each of those individuals the courage to perhaps make this their baptism day. God, for others of us, we, we perhaps you've been speaking to us and nudging us on maybe things we need to start or things we need to stop. And, and that's the ongoing part of our faith because we wanna live more and more in your presence and abiding you, help us to know what to do and what to do next. And thank you for guiding us. So God, we're just gonna celebrate. We wanna experience you. I pray that you do something unique and amazing in each of us in this moment, exactly what we need. We pray these things in your character. Amen. Amen. All right, we're, we're gonna sing. We're gonna go ahead and sing. And uh, uh, the baptism waters are open. If you wanna walk the waters, uh, if you wanna jump in the tub, uh, otherwise, let's celebrate. Let's, let's just take in the goodness of the Father right now. Thanks so much for joining us today. Take a moment to follow our podcast on your preferred platform and be sure to download our app to stay informed on everything happening here at Crosspoint. And if you like what you heard today, don't hesitate to share it with a friend that might need to hear it too.